Hello, this is Dr. Munir Jan from King Khalid University. Today I'm going to talk about this nasopharyngeal airway. So let me start. Now, where to use it? If a patient is in semi conscious state or having intact gag reflex, you can use this nasopharyngeal airway. Now, the advantage of using this nasopharyngeal airway is that it is more comfortable for the patient and plus it cannot lead to the gag reflex. The most important thing is to know where not to put this nasopharyngeal airway. If a patient is having basal skull fracture, if there is a coagulopathy, patient on anticoagulants is there, if there is any nasal pathology, you should not, you should try to avoid using this nasopharyngeal airway. Now, the how we use this nasopharyngeal airway or how we insert this nasopharyngeal airway you can see there is an oblique cut here this is known as the bevel end so we try to keep this bevel end towards the nasal septum now before putting this you have to lubricate it nicely because you have to go through the narrow passage after lubrication just keep this bevel towards the nasal septum okay towards the nasal septum you can sit either on the head end or on the side you don't have to see to the nostril you don't have to look to the nostrils while putting while inserting this nasopharyngeal airway now as i am at the head end as i am at the head end so what i will do Keep, keeping this bevel towards the nasal septum after lubrication, inserting it nicely, gently. If I am feeling any resistance, you don't have to push. I will not push it. So, if you feel resistance, please don't push it. Just use a rotatory movement, then go slowly, slowly, slowly. Again, keeping this bevel towards the nasal septum after lubrication of this nasopharyngeal airway go down slowly 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 if you are feeling any resistance then use rotatory movements so that it can go gently okay why you don't have to push because it can lead to turbinate injury and it can lead to bleeding injury can happen in the nose so you just have to avoid that pushing moment okay now, the idea is same as that of oropharyngeal airway. It tries to lift the tongue away from the posterior pharyngeal wall. Now, if the size is small, what will happen? The idea of lifting the tongue will not be there. Okay. Or if the size is very large, what will happen? It will push the epiglottis down and hence leading to the obstruction. So the size estimation before inserting the nasopharyngeal airway is also important. So how we estimate the proper size? We try to keep this tip, this end at the tip of the nose to the tragus, okay, to the tragus of the ear, okay, tip of the nose to the tragus of the ear, you can see the tragus. Okay, from, from the tip of the nose to the tragus, from the tip of the nose to the tragus, we can estimate the appropriate size, approximate size for nasopharyngeal area. Now, how we estimate the internal diameter? It is just, I mean, what we do, we try to see the little finger of the patient to get the guess about what should be the appropriate or approximate internal diameter that we should use the we should use for that naso for that patient okay so this was all about this nasopharyngeal airway i hope you will like this video and please if you like this please subscribe and uh, and please press the bell icon if i upload next video then you will come to know Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.